you have a new planted aquarium that's covered in brown tiatom algae, then autosinkless catfish may be your next best friend. Keep watching as I share how I keep them happy, healthy, and well-fed. Hi, I'm a gamer's wife here with practical and proven tips on nanofish and planted aquariums. And even though autosinkless catfish are purported to be these amazing algae eaters and a must have for any planted tank, I was a little leery of them because I heard they're notoriously sensitive to uh, water quality, parameters, and hard to feed, aka not to beginner friendly. But when I first started this 20 gallon Shy Guys jungle tank, it soon got carpeted by a thick layer of brown diatom algae. Okay, no problem, this is a common occurrence with all newly set up planted tanks. All I gotta do is dial in the nutrients, the lighting, etc., and it should go away, right? Mmm, well call me impatient, but after two months of having to manually scrub off brown algae off of plant leaves using a toothbrush, I knew I needed help. Time to call in the cavalry. So what are autosynclus catfish? Basically it's a genus of South American catfish generally found in large swarms swimming in well oxygenated small streams or near riverbanks where there's a lot of dense vegetation. They typically grow to about one and a half to two inches, have a pretty streamlined flat profile with ideally a slightly rounded belly, uh, rows of armored plates on its body, and then of course a large sucker mouth to cling onto surfaces like your glass or river rocks. There's something like 20 species discovered so far. I have no idea which species I have, but it's like the most common one. The one that has like a black gray uh, back, a horizontal black stripe running along the side of its body, and then kind of a white underside. They're very popular and readily available at most local fish stores for a pretty affordable price. I think I got mine for $3.50 for five of them and you get the sixth one free. So obviously they want you to buy schools of them. And the most important part is to make sure that they're well fed and kind of have a rounded belly when you get them uh, because most of them are wild caught. So when I got them, I talked to my local fish store and they said they had had them for three weeks and they were eating um, algae wafers and wood. But when I looked at them, they looked kind of, I don't know, flat bellied, neither thin nor fat. So we'll see how they do. Honestly, they're actually not that hard to keep as long as you A, buy autosynclists that are already eating foods, um, B, put them in a well-established mature aquarium that has excellent water quality, and then C, feed them plenty of foods that they'll actually eat. Okay, let's talk about tank setup. So ideally they should be in a 10 to 20 gallon aquarium minimum with temperatures from 72 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. pH is a little bit on the lower side, like 6.0 to 7.5. But again, I have 8.0 to 8.2 pH and they're doing okay. Uh, don't be scared of the fact when I say they need to be in a well-established mature aquarium. What I really mean by that is it just needs to be cycled so that you have zero ppm ammonia and nitrites regularly. Uh, so in my case, I have such a high pH that 0.25 ppm ammonia would be lethal to them, unlike other hardier fish. They are extremely peaceful fish, and while I don't see them in a lot of tight schooling behavior, they definitely enjoy each other's company, so I would get at least 3 to 6 at a minimum. As for tank mates, really anything that's peaceful that would go in a community tank. So tetras, rasboras, corridoras, and even shrimp. Really just nothing that's too aggressive or big enough to eat them. My betta fish sound wave will sometimes flare at them a little bit and they'll just kind of flit away a few inches like, whatever dude. Unlike many catfish, they are diurnal, which means they're awake during the daytime and you can often find them grazing off the walls of the aquarium, the leaves on aquarium plants, and uh, the substrate even. But because they can be a little skittish at first, you do want to provide lots of cover and hopefully live aquarium plants. However, thankfully, I found that over time, I can get right up to them and now they're pretty used to me and they don't swim away at all. Okay, let's talk about dietary requirements because that's definitely an area that a lot of people have trouble with. Now, they are omnivores that like higher vegetable content and a little bit lighter on the protein side because in the wild, they like to eat afwooks. Afwooks? <laughs> Which is basically that slimy film that covers underwater plants and rocks. And it's primarily made of algae and diatoms, but there's also some little microorganisms, crustaceans, and insect larvae in them. Now in your aquarium, they'll definitely prefer to eat softer algae, so any soft green algae or brown diatom algae. And yes, they completely demolished all of the brown diatom algae in the Shy Guys tank two days after I added them. Amazing. 
But what happens when all that algae is gone? What are you gonna feed these super picky eaters? Well, first of all, I did try algae wafers like my local fish store said they were feeding them and they wouldn't touch the stuff. So I don't know, maybe I was feeding the wrong brand. Instead, I would highly recommend that you get a jar of Rapashi Soylent Green Gel Food, which is specifically made for off wooks eaters like auto -sinkless. Now it may take them like a day or two to get used to it, but once they get a taste of it, they cannot resist the stuff. It's amazing. You can also feed them real vegetables meant for human beings. So my auto sinkless really like canned green beans because they're nice and soft, as well as blanched zucchini slices. The trick there is to make sure to leave them in for 24 hours so they get nice and mushy. If you've never blanched zucchini before, it's super easy. I just bought an organic zucchini from the supermarket, cut it into like quarter inch or half centimeter slices, maybe a little less, and then I cut the slices in half again dumped the slices into boiling water for about one to two minutes. And then once you removed all the water, you can put it on a baking sheet covered in foil so that each of the slices aren't touching each other and then freeze them. Once the slices are individually frozen so they won't stick to each other as easily, put it into a Ziploc bag or other plastic container and stick it in your freezer. That way, every time you need a slice, you can just get one out and plop it in the tank. You can tell if your autosynclists are eating well because if they're hanging on the side of the glass, their stomachs look like there's a half pearl on their midsections, and it's super satisfying to see. <laughs> As for breeding, I have no idea how to breed these things. Uh, I was focused mostly on keeping them alive, but I heard they're a little bit similar to Corydoras. So um, I believe Master Breeder Dean did an interview on Bentley Pasca's channel, which I'll link in the card in the description below. But he recommended conditioning the autosynclus with live and frozen baby brine, whoop, live and frozen baby brine shift and zucchini slices. And then hopefully you should see some sticky eggs on the plant leaves and other surfaces. Apparently they like to eat maybe soft algae, <laughs> soft veggies, thank you, uh, and tiny fry food. So good luck. So are they worth it? I think a definite yes if you have a planted tank that has enough room for them. I mean, I know they look a little bit drab at first, but I personally think they're really cute with their huge black eyes and that cool pattern they have on their tail. And then that crisscross lattice work on their body is like really neat to look at up close. So it, would I have gotten them if I didn't have any algae problems before? Probably not because there's other cool oddball or more colorful fish out there. But now that I've gotten them, they are super adorable. And I don't think I could ever set up another planted tank without them. So definitely a five out of five would recommend. If you wanna see what other fish I have in this tank, make sure to check out my Shy Guys stocking video over here, as well as other fish care videos I have over here. Take time to enjoy your crams, and I'll see you in the next video. Okay,